we got to start having difficult conversations between the police and the community. And there's no easy way. We've got to stumble through it because we've got a lot of ugly history. I don't think anyone can claim the higher moral ground, right? I think everybody's got to listen. First and foremost, on behalf of the law enforcement associations involved with this project, we are very thankful for each and every one of you coming to the table. If we can begin to share and understand each other's perspectives, I think moving out from that space is the best thing that we can do. And then you can start to heal those relationships. So let's have a conversation. I want to say off top. Thank you for being willing. All of you guys around the table. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm probably going to sit here and be more anecdotal than anything because okay. I come from a place of having dealt with police. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm a criminal. Please, let me, if you guys, please, <laughs> <laughs> let's start there. <laughs> it's not the case, but I'm saying every time that I've had an exchange with a police officer has, n has not been positive, right? Mm -hmm. And it hasn't, I'm trying to get home. When I leave, I tell my son, whatever I need to do to get home, I'm going to make it back home, right? So I'm going to be respectful to the police officer. I'm going to, uh, sir, officer, all this. But it always seems what comes back to me is condescension mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you're less than. And I will only speak for myself personally since we're on film. <laughs> I'm not going to speak on behalf of all law enforcement. For me personally, it was, it's being a police officer puts you in this weird space because once you put that uniform on, in order to maintain your safety, you almost have to expect the worst out of everybody that you encounter. Right. Why? Yeah. Because that keeps you safe. Mm -hmm. So if I do a traffic stop, I keep my vigilance level up to an eight or a nine mm -hmm. until that interaction allows me to bring it down again. So when you say you have gotten out the car on a nine and I'm already scared, this is not going to be okay. Right. But it will. But if you if you if you do that, if it's a yes sir, no sir, and I see well, that you're but cool. But RC saying he done that <laughs> historically. <laughs> where where does the yes sir no sir come in? Why why you said as long as you say yes sir, why is that even a thing? Well, that's what I do. I, I call everybody yes sir, no sir. I mean, I mean, do you don't have to do the it. inverse on the inverse because yeah. yeah, I do I think, I'm, I'm doing come? it because I want to be safe. I feel like if because you I fear for your you, life, I'm scared. If I get pulled over by police, I'm scared. I am. <laughs> I just am. So, sir, yes, no, Mr. Officer, whatever. I'm trying to make it home. Like, what more okay. can I do? If I say, well, you asshole, then I'm, it's over for me. There's right? a gray area between <laughs> yes, sir, and asshole. <laughs> 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 I think just being civil, just being, you know, if I didn't do anything wrong and I feel that way, I'm, I just don't, I'm not inclined to show extra respect out of fear of something I did not do. And I think that's the part that but kind of in the and as long as you're that's civil, the, you know what I mean. As long as you're civil, yeah. it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna talk to you how we're talking now. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, I get it. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to be clear that when I say I get out and I'm at a nine, doesn't mean that I'm out with an assault rifle pointed at your car. Mm -hmm. It just means I am looking for your body language, your tone of voice. Mm -hmm. Are you reaching before I've given you any instructions? Mm -hmm. Anything that, that looks funny to me, mm -hmm. I have to respond to that. Well, see, well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you that. If I'm scared, the mm -hmm. stuff that you may see may just be a manifestation of that. Mm -hmm. I'm scared, sir. So if I, if I twitch a little bit, I'm not reaching for a gun. <laughs> I'm just scared. It's, it's things like empathy taught during the training. Like, like maybe this person needs a hug or something. Like, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, how I far, is, how far? That happen, right? like, that's part of our <laughs> training off guard for like that. the crisis intervention team. That's what the CIT stands for, is crisis intervention team. But also in the academy, they're taught about victimology, crisis intervention. We talk about interviewing versus interrogating, that kind of thing. But the other issue is also our officer safety. Like, yeah, you could hug people, right? But you gotta make sure that they're not gonna be crazy and grab your gun because that has happened, right? Oh, yeah. And then the other thing, you know, the other component is if you become too empathetic, you will crush yourself under the weight of what you see in the world. You can't. And I don't know that we've reached a point in this country where it is socially acceptable for law enforcement to deal with the, the mental and emotional aspects of what we do. I think it's difficult for the police to cope with what they deal with. What I tend to see is more of an adaptive dysfunction, 
right? You have to take the humanity out of it just a little bit to continue to walk head on into trauma and death and grief and danger. But I think the difficulty becomes they sometimes just normalize, this is what I'm dealing with, this is no big deal, and don't really acknowledge the impact of what they're seeing. People all around them are traumatized, and by default, they become impacted by that same trauma, right? So we talk about African-American people's fear, but the police also have fear. Like, I understand that there's fear on both sides, right? Because there's an unknown factor. But there are power imbalances that do then play out, right? So how do you find that middle ground of saying, okay, this person's not being civil with me, but I'm able to still make sure that the situation doesn't feel threatening 